Today, the topic is fatigue. Should you get tested for Addison's or maybe when should you get tested for Addison's? Mm -hmm. I'm Dr. Martin Rutherford, functional medicine practitioner, chiropractor. Been in practice since 1979. Mm -hmm. Just thinking about that this morning for some reason. Longer than I've been alive. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Randall Gates, board certified chiropractic neurologist, also a chiropractor. So we treat a lot of fatigue. Uh, for those of you who haven't watched, uh, we we got together, I don't know, eight years ago now? Is it something Coming around eight years? Somehow. Eight years. Um, I was practicing in functional medicine before that. I was a chiropractor for a long time. Always had an interest in, in uh, uh, even though I was doing musculoskeletal work, always had an interest in diets and things like that and supplements and why isn't this patient's spine getting better? And, and, and so many of those patients were fatigued. Uh, the, the, the conversation we had just before we came on is, uh, and we've had this conversation before, pretty much anything that goes wrong in your body causes fatigue, it seems like. Our mo in our model, over the years, we started out, to, we really started out treating mainly like fibromyalgia, mm -hmm. peripheral neuropathy, dizziness, vertigo, balance, mm -hmm. if I recall correctly. But fibromyalgia was like the main one because that, it seemed like it had so many moving parts to it. All fibromyalgia patients were fatigued if you, if you're a fibromyalgia patient and you look back, they used to call CFIDS, chronic fatigue syndrome, fibromyalgia, were almost like considered as one and the same thing. And there's reasons for that. Um, so we get to see a lot of fatigue. People come in, they have bowel problem, they're fatigued. People come in, they're stressed, they have, they have depression, they have fatigue. Mm -hmm. uh, our general model is um, uh, when a person comes in, we generally look for a misdiagnosed or mismatched thyroid misdiagnosed or mismanaged blood sugar, uh, chronic stress hormones, which is obliquely connected to what we're gonna talk about here. Um, we look for gut problems. We look for Epstein-Barr virus, because that can cause chronic fatigue on an, in and of itself. We look for uh, anemia, in general, mitochondrial dysfunction. I mean, that's basically the box that we play in. And then there's these people that come in and that's not it. <laughs> None of that's it. Chronic fatigue is not, not to laugh, but chronic fatigue is one of our, uh, we see it all the time. We, we've morphed into a chronic pain practice. Dr. Gates is a functional neurologist and I was involved in, in, in uh, the early days of functional medicine. And, um, and so we put these two together to try to handle all the aspects of chronic disease. And most of the aspects of chronic disease, by the way, are contained within the framework of what we just got done talking about for chronic pain or for chronic uh, fatigue. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, but then there's other things. And, and, is, and, and Dr. Gates, as he said, we just talked about before, um, when the chronic fatigue patient comes in, that requires some astute diagnostics. You really have to have their history. You, have to, you really have to know, you know what you're going after. Well, um, when do you look for Addison's disease? Because Addison's disease certainly causes chronic fatigue and then some. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, so that's kind of topic today. We haven't seen a ton of Addison's disease, mm -hmm. but we do see it. Okay. And when you do see it, you know, it's important to recognize it and then make the proper referrals, mm -hmm. get, the proper, get the proper testing, mm -hmm. get the proper diagnosis, work in, in manners that are correct for that, that may be a lot different than the ones that we just got talk, talking about. Yeah. So Addison's. Yeah, Addison's is so interesting relative to the chronic fatigue patients because a lot of chronic fatigue patients have a low HPA axis function. Function. So what that means, the HPA axis is the hypothalamo pituitary adrenal axis. So basically your brain down to your adrenal glands in terms of the stress response. And it's been shown time and time again in the literature that most CFS patients, chronic fatigue, will have low signaling from their brain to their adrenal glands. And that's a functional diagnosis almost. Even though it's throughout the literature, that piece to it is not really acknowledged in the medical world versus Addison's disease can either be primary or secondary. Really, Addison's disease refers to when the disease process is primary, so there's something affecting the adrenal glands itself. In the past, it used to be tuberculosis. Tuberculosis used to induce the adrenal glands to fail, so it was an infectious-induced adrenal failure. But now, most of the time, it's autoimmune. And so the immune system is killing the adrenal glands. Because of that, once the adrenal glands fail enough, then they can't make enough adrenal hormones, so 
hormones like cortisol become low, aldosterone becomes low. So then as a consequence of that, your sodium and your potassium levels get deranged in the bloodstream and volume of blood gets deranged. So people will have a tendency to be really fatigued. They may have dizziness when they stand up, they can have diarrhea and vomiting, muscle aches, just a whole host of symptoms. And when Addison's comes on abruptly, really quickly, it's actually rather life-threatening, especially if somebody has- And autoimmune problems tend to come on. Exactly. Quickly. They tend to come like on. Like out of nowhere. And the re also another reason why we wanted to do this is that Addison's tends to be associated with most other autoimmune diseases. They're called the autoimmune polyglandular syndrome. So basically you have multiple autoimmune conditions occurring, whether you're hypoparathyroid and having Addison's, that's type one, or if you have a thyroid problem, Graves or Hashimoto's with diabetes, with Addison's, that's type two, there's also a type four. So these are things that clinicians really need to be aware of. And as Dr. Rutherford illuminated in the intro, working with chronic patients or chronic ill patients is, I think, one of the most difficult diagnostic dilemmas because you have people lots of times who have been chronically ill who have seen everyone, but that doesn't mean that all of their problems are functional. When we say functional, we're referring to like they don't have MS, but that doesn't mean that they can't develop new problems, new pathologies, so to speak, that have to be assessed. So you can have somebody who's had chronic fatigue for a long time and they may have had Addison's disease for a long time, but their adrenal glands were not destroyed enough yet until finally they kind of got pushed over the hump, so to speak, and now their adrenal glands are failing and you have to make that diagnosis of Addison's disease pretty quickly. We also wanted to kind of hammer this point because the interesting new literature about Addison's is that it's very much like Hashimoto's in its development. So Hashimoto's is an autoimmune thyroid condition where the immune system is killing the thyroid. And lots of times the immune system is killing the thyroid for months years. to years, a long time before finally the thyroid gland starts to fail and, you start and it doesn't make symptoms. enough thyroid hormone. Yeah. Now, fortunately, hypothyroidism is usually not as lethal as Addison's disease, but they're seeing that the same process lots of times occurs mm -hmm. with Addison's disease. And now they're doing research and saying, you know, there may even be this gray area where people's immune system are attacking the adrenal glands and their adrenal glands are still functioning, but not really functioning all that great. And that could be clinically significant and probably these patients need to be treated. So they're referring to this as subclinical Addison's disease. Just like if you go back and watch our broadcast, we've talked about subclinical hypothyroidism. So in the past, as it pertains to the thyroid, most doctors were trained not to treat the thyroid until it was really low. That's the basic gist of it. And then now the markers for this have come down and have come down and have come down to where now the medical community is saying, you know what? I even had an endocrinologist yesterday who was saying, you know what? I'm a firm believer in subclinical hypothyroidism and that people need to be treated when their thyroid is just a little bit low. Now that is a radical shift in really the diagnostic and treatment world within endocrinology. And we're actually starting to see that same paradigm be parlayed over into Addison's disease. Yeah. So to kind of take Addison's disease into a little more detail for those of you who want to know, as we said, primary adrenal failure is referred to Addison's. It can also be, you can have a secondary adrenal insufficiency, which results from brain related conditions. So people have tumors on their pituitary gland, they won't make enough of the chemical that goes to the adrenal gland, it's called ACTH. Very interestingly, uh, strokes can affect this. Concussions can be a big factor in causing secondary adrenal insufficiency for all of you patients out there who have had head injuries, and we even did a whole broadcast on that as it pertained to post-concussion syndrome and get your hormones checked. So that's important. Uh, why do these immune cells form to the adrenal glands. I don't think it's really known yet. For example, like with autoimmune thyroid disease, it's thought that the immune cells to the thyroid gland form because of gut reactions to certain foods. <clears throat> They're even thinking that type one diabetes may have a similar component and infections within the pancreas itself that trigger the immune system to attack the pancreas, like with chlamydia infections and things of that nature. We don't really know with Addison's disease, but it does occur and if you have 
fatigue, especially if it's sudden and onset, right. and you're seeing different practitioners and you're not getting results, even if your blood tests are, so to speak, normal in terms of your sodium and potassium levels, you may want to ask your doctor, hey, will you check me for Addison's disease? And the blood test that you want to ask them about is the 21 hydroxylase antibody count. So that's the antibody to the adrenal gland. Was there anything else you wanted to impart, Doc, <clears throat> on this issue? No, I was, I was going to say, so when do you look? And I, to me, I would say you, what you just said, you've seen, you're fatigued. You've been everywhere. You maybe you've been, well, hopefully you haven't been everywhere because if you, if the fatigue comes on out of nowhere, to me, that would be the, like, that would be like, the, okay, there's something going on here. Because most fatigue, thyroid over a period of time, blood sugar over a period of time, chronic stress hormones over a period of time, gut function over a period of time, injuries. Uh, if it was a concussion, well, okay, I'm fatigued. I get that it was my concussion, but if it just kind of comes out of nowhere, mm -hmm. that's a hallmark of autoimmunity, period. Somebody's feeling great, then they have a baby, next thing you know, oh my God, everything fell apart. Usually that person's developed an autoimmune attack against their thyroid at that point in time. Uh, I, I had surgery, all of a sudden everything fell apart. My feet started hurting, my body started hurting. They developed an immune attack against maybe their nerves, maybe against their thyroid, maybe something like that. I think that would might maybe be mm -hmm. like the hallmark mm -hmm. of like, Big fatigue out of nowhere. Right, exactly. Especially if you're having some diarrhea associated with it or you're urinating all the time. Those are definite features that you may have. Adrenal insufficiency, as it's termed. And just know that the diagnosis for this includes those antibodies. You can also go see an endocrinologist where they'll inject a, a chemical called syncothin, syncothin uh, which is just chemical ACTH. And they see how your adrenal glands respond. They check your plasma renin activity. In fact, anybody can check that. Your aldosterone levels, your cortisol levels, and your urine. There's a specific way to diagnose this, but it is something that's important for people to be paying attention to because we've seen it and you don't want to miss it. So I think that pretty well summarizes it. I mean, we could go into the details of the adrenal gland and all the chemicals it produces. I don't really think that's needed. No, I think it's really presenting that, that fatigue patient who's been mm -hmm. everywhere and tried right. everything with that next option yeah i'm like okay and if you fit if this fits like oh my god that was me I, I was like sunday i was playing softball and monday night i was just like i've been able to get out of bed since or i'm dragging myself through life or i don't feel like getting off the couch or then then maybe that gives this group uh, of, of viewers another option mm -hmm. to look for perfect so we appreciate you watching. Uh, we have about 20 research articles attached to today's broadcast. If you want to access those, rather than watching this on YouTube, go to powerhealthtalk.com, search Addison's disease. This talk will come up, and then at, below the video, you'll be able to access the research articles. So we hope you found this helpful, and if you have any, um, if you have any topics you want us to discuss, go ahead and email those to us, and we'd be happy to cover them. Thanks for watching.